Hey all you Inklings, Hajra here. You might know that I rarely buy or review new art supplies, but today is one of those days. I'll be trying and reviewing an ink fountain pen, a reed pen, and new inks for the first time and comparing them to my other inky tools. So thanks for parking your brushes here and let the inky art adventures begin. $7 patrons get all my new longer private YouTube videos, free passes to my six previous Skillshare videos, along with many other info-dense deconstructed art and Q&A posts, video notes, and sketch downloads. To get an idea of what I post, you can check out my public index of all my Patreon posts divided by category and with free public post links labeled for easy perusal by all. Okay, so usually when I ink, I use either a marker or a brush, it's this Zig Rider and it's this acid-free archival pigment ink and it's also waterproof, which is nice because you can sort of ink your lines first and then not worry about them bleeding. Bought these incredible nibs, which uh, I think is a sarcastic name because I have not found them to be so incredible. They're rather thick, so I'm not saying they wouldn't be nice for like really thick color fills if you're filling with ink, but a 0.5 millimeter, even after shaving this down with an X-Acto knife, these are still really broad. I also bought a glass pen because I thought that would be a nice alternative to a dip nib pen because I used to have dip nib pens, but they sort of catch in the tooth of certain watercolor paper, so I sort of switched to either paint brushes for inking or the marker and uh, the glass pen, and the glass pen is still not as fine as I want. It. So for the really fine lines, I do use paint brushes like this quadruple zero or this um, thin liner brush. The new stuff that I got is actually this wood reed pen that I'm excited about trying because you can also shave it down to make it smaller, but it's nice because it's kind of like a dip nib pen, but without as much maintenance and upkeep. Somebody recently sent me this lovely new fountain pen. It's by Lamy. And I think it's their safari pen, a little ink bottle to go with it, and it's by the famous ink makers Herbin. Supposed to be one of the best inks in the world and it's not waterproof so you'll want to use it over a piece where you're going to be using watercolor then I think you'd have to use it last, not first like I do with waterproof inks like the Dr. Phil Martins. And the color that um, he sent me was the dregs of tea. So it's a lovely tea dreg color that we're going to be looking at. The only other color that I saw on there that I thought was really cool, this one, and it's because it's moon dust. And I love the moon and I love dark purple and magentas and red violets and purple. So I thought that the brown would have been my first choice for the most uh, versatile and that was the color that he sent me. And then this one is like sort of my whimsical, magical color and also still goes for a lot of things because a dark purple can sort of stand in for a black. So this moon dust and tea dregs I think are two perfect ink colors to have here. It has a great little divot there that you can actually rest a brush in or a pen in if you were having it sit on your desk. So that's really nice. There's like at least three sizes. So you can get two more sizes that are like smaller than this or the cartridge version. And the pen itself did come with a blue cartridge that I can put into here. I used to have a calligraphy pen that had a dip nib type steel nib at the bottom, but it was a cartridge pen, so it was more convenient than my other dip nib pens. So I know how to load this, but I'm actually gonna fill this up with the, the ink that I have so I can try that with this new pen. Now you basically turn this piston thingy and it goes all the way down. And then when you turn it back up, it should vacuum suck up the ink here. So that's how this should work. So I'm gonna shake this bottle of ink up. You're gonna start with the tea dregs first? Yeah, the tea dregs. And that's Elijah here, all the way down. Hopefully I can just get it to, oh, here it comes. Lot. So you want that much ink, really? Mm -hmm. This is a water-soluble ink, so it goes well in a fountain pen. You don't want to use a waterproof ink in a fountain pen. And this is a fine tip. There, It says so right there on their F. They make also an extra fine, which is just a bit smaller, and they make a few sizes that are larger. So what's the first thing that you notice when you're using something like this? Like, what's the very first thing you notice? Um, how nice the flow is, because when you're using a brush, you have to stop to reload it and also, you know, if you press up and down it gives you variable sort of line widths, which is nice, but when you want an equal line width then a fountain pen is really nice. And you can get a little bit of variation on this too because as you spread it, it can do that. It'll be great for a handwriting stroke and for general inking. I like that you can sort of see your ink in the barrel here. This has got to be not waterproof. Let's see. Yep, it spreads. Okay, so this Zig Rider has got two tips this wider tip, and then it's also got this 0.5 millimeter. This can get finer when it's on its tippy toe. You can see that it's finer than this one. Really teeny tiny detail, so you could just use a brush for that. So my waterproof ink swatches are somewhere in this pile. It has more personality and warmth to it. This one's darker, just a bit more black towards black, so it's nice to have a lighter brown as well. So here's my glass pen. You 
You can add water to it and you can see that that's what it looks like when it's lighter. But it's almost a dark brownish blackish color when you're using it full strength. But see this uh, glass pen is great for inking lines if they were a little bit thicker than the Zig Writer. But you can definitely also get a little bit finer depending on how much ink you're putting on there. Where does it, that glass pen hold the ink? Where does it hold it? Does it hold it in the little Yeah, there's little ridges. ridges? Yeah, and there's so it collects in the ridges. On yeah, it? it does. And you can actually see some leftover green ink there that I need to use like a toothpick and some rubbing alcohol to get out. But this is never going to happen with this ink because this ink is water soluble. So that's the same thing that's clogging this pen right here, but that's easy to clean. Would be what would clog the fountain pen if it was a waterproof ink, which is why you don't want to use it there. But this is a non-waterproof ink, which means that it washes right off out of your pen. Do you like the color? Oh, I love this color. I love both of these colors. These are like the only two colors I wanted. So <laughs> one color somebody got me and the second one I got myself. I think these are lovely colors. And look, you can wash that right out. I just rinsed it out. Yeah, see, so this purple is definitely a, a cooler purple, the violet that's in the Dr. Phil Martens. And then this is a, a warmer, almost a red violet, but not quite there. And I love that it's called moon dust. Isn't that great? So if someone was just getting started mm -hmm. inking, which of these would you recommend? Oh, I'd recommend the fountain pen because it's just in a cartridge and you can go anywhere and travel with it. And if you have the glass pen, you can break the tip or you can drop this pen or you can break it while you're traveling. It can be quite dangerous. <laughs> so I would say that, you know, if you're, if you have this at home and that's fine, you can use it definitely as a beginner too, but for something that's much more sort of versatile and robust, I would take the fountain pen. And I mean, why not the Zig Writer? I mean, the Zig Marker, I like these, but I just don't think it makes an expensive or a nice gift, you know, it's a, and for what it is, it's actually a nice thing, you know, this is pigment-based ink and it's waterproof, I really, really like that, because you don't have to worry about this ever bleeding if you're inking something. And let me do the incredible nib real quick, I'm kind of doing this out of order because I got too excited to try the fountain pen and the inks, but that's fine. You can see that kind of like a fiber tip, and you can go ahead and color with it. I'd say if you had a large fill section, that this is easy to fill it with. I've done that before. But if you want a fine tip, like the ones that you get on the other side of the zig, then you can't use it. But essentially, if you don't want to keep paying money to buy more markers, because those zig writers are not refillable, then your broad tip can be on one of these sides, right? Or you could use a paintbrush. Is that really a need? No. Or are you just trying to justify? This is easier to work with than a paintbrush for some people. And the paintbrush is actually the most versatile. So let me show you how, see how this is a spotter. And I can use this to give me darker and lighter ink colors in a way that you can't get with a pen, right? And then you can also get really fine lines and you can get dashes and dots. I mean, you can do dashes and dots with a fountain pen too, but the variable width where you can go thin to thick and stuff like that, you can't do that with really much of anything except for a brush. And that's where I would do my finest strokes. So what I'm getting ready to do here is once this Zig Rider tanks out, this is my second one. I have one in my travel kit and I have one at home and this black color, and I have a few others like a brown and like a sepia or whatever. I'm not gonna refill those because they're not refillable. I think it's wasteful to just have all those plastic barrels around. I'm just gonna let them run out and then I'm gonna do all my inking, not with a marker anymore. As convenient as that is, it's very wasteful, I think. So there's nothing wrong with sitting and practicing a lot of lines also, these liner brushes are a bit wobbly, so even though I have this one designated for ink, it can get a little bit tricky, and um, it's rather fatiguing for me. I don't know how other people feel about it. So I would say that I like the shorter brushes better than these liners, but if you want like a long line that you can just sort of throw down fast, that's what this rigger or this liner brush is for, because it can carry a lot of paint, but it gives you a thin line. So you can do that, but I would say if you want to have an even line, then just use your fountain pen or something like your glass pen if you are having trouble controlling a brush and then just get to your brush later. I learned how to ink with a brush last. Okay, so here's this reed pen and I'm excited about this because I really don't know what this is gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna dip it into here. Yeah, that's actually like- Seems like a much thicker amount of ink being put down at least at first. Yeah, I mean, it, that'll happen with the, the glass pen too. But I think what's more concerning to me is that this is just quite a thick line and I want something thinner. I've got enough thick tips to um, to ink with. It's a little bit thicker even, I think, on this side. This side's even thicker. So this is a small size of this reed pen and this reed pen didn't cost very much. It was like two bucks or something. And I think if you get on the very edge of this, there's like a little honed area at the tip and you can actually use that to make it 
thicker in one direction and thinner in the other. So I think I'm gonna have to practice with that before I decide to take an X-Acto knife to it, you know? Like maybe if I can just use the very tip of it like that, then maybe I don't have to use an X-Acto knife because then I can maybe make it as thin as I would get with a brush, you know? It's not an exact science though, it seems like. I think it's better than the nib, the incredible nib, this reed pen. If you want a steady tool that doesn't like smush on you the way that a brush does. I'll be using my ink tense pans. I'm going to dry waterproof and I'm actually going the opposite direction to what I normally do when I'm inking, which is I usually ink first and then I paint over it. But since I'm gonna be using my new water soluble ink, I'm going to be painting first and then inking, which is something I used to do a lot when I was younger because I didn't always have waterproof inks. And the nice thing about using sort of the the dip nib pens or the reed pen or the glass pen or a paintbrush is that you can certainly use your waterproof ink when you want to because it's not going to clog anything. You're going to rinse out that brush or you're going to rinse out that reed pen or the glass pen and that's fine. But since I want to use my really smooth, nice new fountain pen, I'm going to be using water soluble ink because that's what goes in a fountain pen. So I'm going to do my inking last. His little belt here. A red, and I'm going to add a touch of this mango color to it, that's the orange, to make it a bit more peach. And even though the ink tent says waterproof on the paper, it's actually still resoluble when it's in your pans and stuff, so that's actually a nice touch. Yeah, that's close enough to the color I think I'm seeing in the uh, animated still that I went and looked up online. I did like this monster post on Patreon that's deconstructing, you know, using Gestalt and color theory and layout and stuff, various art of Mickey in the old animation cells and stuff. It's a really nice deconstructed art post on my Patreon and a few people who wanted me to do a Mickey piece, so here he is. It took me a while to redraw it so that it looked right. It's just as hard to draw these guys as it is to draw something complicated because you, you'll lose a likeness if you don't get the lines where they're supposed to be. I was obsessed with either becoming a Disney animator or a comic book artist when I was a kid and by the time I got older everything had died in that sort of direction because everything went digital more or less when it came to the traditional animation and I was a big fan of the traditional animation and not the, the CGI stuff that they had in like Toy Story and all the movies that came after. And I was also a big fan of comic books. I think probably given my health it's a limitation I would have had to have faced because I know that those people have grueling hours. And for this particular video, I am not going to have a longer private version on YouTube because it's more like a product review and this demo is too easy. But yes, I'm having more and more videos where I do a shorter, less detailed version on YouTube and do a longer, almost real-time tutorial on Patreon. So if you get a chance to get involved in my Patreon, that would be great because you could get all of that information in those longer videos and posts I, and sketch downloads and all sorts of stuff like that. I'm just going to speed through this for most of this because there is just really easy color fills and that's why I'm using such a simple picture is I don't want to be caught up in the technicalities of stuff. I just want to see how well that pen works. So let's just get through this for most of it and then we can come back and try that pen and see how well it goes. I can tell you that the pen flow is really smooth. It's like, you know, smoother than a marker and very firm under your hand the way that a brush is not, so it sort of combines the best of both worlds. Literally the only thing that I think that fountain pens don't have is that you can't use waterproof ink in them, and that's not something that'll ever be the case. So that's the only thing that I'd say you could fix about something like this, because otherwise this is just a great tool. It just goes down super fluidly, there's no tug at your hand, and it's nice and firm, and it's great for writing or for painting. I used to have one before for doing ink lines and stuff and like I said I sort of got rid of them after a while because I was trying to have fewer tools and then after I decided I was going to be doing inking with markers I thought why not get back to one of these so I was just considering getting one of these when somebody sent me this. So that's nice. It's just really a great gift when somebody gets you something you were just considering getting. That's like the best kind of gift, right? Obviously. And 
again, because this is water-soluble ink, you really don't want to do this in the opposite direction of where you're doing this first and then coming back to paint. Unless you don't mind your ink running and smearing and stuff. And like I said, I've done that before in the past for certain ink effects and such. So that might be something you want to go for in which case that's fine. But if you don't, then do your ink lines later. Now this is an F. There's only one more that's smaller than this. So it's an extra fine. So not as fine as the line that you'd get if you were using a 0.5 millimeter. And a part of it is it's got liquid ink coming out of it. So when you press out on it, it you know comes out at a greater flow than you would have than if you were just using a marker. So that's also something that you have to keep in mind is that if you have a larger drawing like this and if you're doing something, especially over paint, because you can see that if I was doing it over bare paper, just like I was doing for her face, the line can be finer. See how fine it can be? But when you do it over paper that you've already put paint on, it bleeds into that slightly damaged paper especially if you're using a pulp paper, like mixed media paper, so your line will automatically be thicker. So prepare for that too. To my scrub jay here, which is a much smaller drawing, and you know, it was an original drawing, so I was thinking of doing this one first, but if I did this one, it would have to be in just the ink and not with any paint if I wanted the lines to be fine, because as soon as you're inking over paper that's been a bit compromised, look at how much thicker your lines get. And with this paper, it's happening this much, and with this ink, it's happening this much. With another paper and another ink, it'll happen a little bit less or a little bit more. So that's all dependent on your different tools. I'm actually super happy with the results on this because I luckily chose a piece that has very big lines, you know, because it's a animated still style drawing. Okay, so what I'm going to do here now is just finish inking this, and I will mention my lefty curse caught up with me, like it does so often. And I did smear um, by the right bottom of her dress and by her eye, but luckily I have some Bleed Proof White by Dr. Phil Martins, which is supposed to be like the nuclear bomb version of correction stuff, so I just pulled that out. If you have some white ink, if you have a, you know, a white ink or an acrylic paint or something, you can use that too. White gouache will also work, but it's not gonna be waterproof, so it's up to you what you wanna use. Well, wizards, I hope you enjoyed this video where I tried out new inking tools and inks. Please like, comment, and check out my website dashboard for easy access to all my online platform links on a single page to support my art creation and instruction. Thanks for parking your brushes here and wishing you all magical inky adventures.